everybody. Thank you so much for being here today with me in my home studio in Decatur, Georgia. Um, I am so excited to show you this new technique today. Um, it's called shellac burning and I use it on my encaustic paintings. Um, I came across it kind of by accident. I was, um, I heard about it. I looked at some videos online and I picked up a few of my pieces that had some beautiful blue pigment um, with the wax on them from some of the, the um, wave paintings that I've done in the past. You can see on my website. And I was like, oh, let me just try this, um, this method. So I painted on the shellac like I'm about to do for you in a moment. And um, I lit it on fire and the effect was unbelievable and I had that like wow moment that you get as an artist or anyone in a profession or trade that you just absolutely love and something accidental happens and you're like, how do I do that? I love it. How do I do it again? Um, and so I, I kept, I created like two more pieces and took photos of them. I sent them to the gallery owner that I was working at the time. He said, oh my gosh, I love these. Let's show them. And it just so happened that it has become um, one of my favorite series and one of the best selling um, series of paintings that I have right now. Um, I call them Come Undone um, because after I created these little paintings, I was driving around feeling sort of unraveled. I'm not sure if you've ever felt like that before, but kind of like everything in my life was, was kind of unraveling for some reason. And I, a song came on by the Guess Who called um, She's Come Undone. I encourage you to listen to it. it's a pretty awesome song and all of a sudden I was like wow that's like what I'm feeling that's like what I saw in my paintings of coming undone and I'm like wow these paintings look like the inside of a body they look like DNA they look like um, celestial bodies in the universe as well and so that's how the name of this uh, painting series came about and now I'm going to show you how I create it so this is a um, beginning of an encaustic painting. Um, I've tried a little bit of shellac on it, um, but it, it doesn't have the power and effect that I would like, so I'm going to add more. This painting has about 12 to 15 layers of encaustic wax on it already. Um, if you've watched some of my old video, other pit videos from the past, you'll see how I um, pigment my wax, the temperature it needs to be, um, how I apply the wax to these birch panels, how you start, I start with clear layers of wax. And so um, go ahead and look at those past paintings to see where, um, what I did to achieve what you're looking at um, right now. It's, it's really, it's wonderful. And I'm using a blowtorch to um, blend all of these colors together. So if you can imagine, I kind of painted on all of these colors. Um, I use my blowtorch to, blow, to blend and fuse each of the colors together. And now I'm going to start putting the shellac on, which is very toxic. And so um, normally I would be doing this outside. Please do that. Please do this outside. Please, use a wear, please wear a mask, I'll be doing that in a moment, gloves. Um, today it's raining and there's a bunch of noise outside and I need to do this inside. Luckily I have fans built into my studio, I actually have an exhaust system above me um, and as soon as we're done shooting I'm going to take the piece outside and lift the garage doors and go out. So let's start. Um, this is the shellac that I use. Um, it will be posted in the comments a picture of that. You can get it at any hardware store. It's usually used to um, be applied to furniture. This is amber shellac. You can also use clear shellac, but I love the natural amber color that almost gets you this creme brulee type of finish. Um, if you want to come take a class with me, I'll do a workshop on this in the fall. Um, or a private lesson, I will teach you how to also add powdered pigment to the shellac to achieve other colors. But today, I absolutely love um, the warmth of the shellac color on this particular painting. So we're just gonna go for this. Okay, so really wanna shake the shellac up. I've already shaken this quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna take the lid off. 
And it's important to apply the shellac and then immediately set it on fire. I'm gonna use my blowtorch to do that. Um, also have a little safety precautions over here. A little bottle of water, it's going to light on fire. So I wanna make sure if something gets onto the table, something lights on fire, I'm safe, I can put it out. All right, here we go. So, so that you can hear me talk, I'm going to put the brush in, brush on the shellac, and then I'll put the mask on. So I'm sort of just going to follow consciousness and kind of just put this shellac wherever it feels like it needs to be. I rarely like to have a total plan of where the marks and the brush are going to go. I just kind of like to see, you know, what the, what the painting wants. And I'm, I'm putting it down kind of thick in areas and then a little bit thin in areas as well. All right, so now I put my mask on. <clears throat> I'm gonna move this completely away. Do not want to set that on fire. The alcohol is going to burn off. And here we go. Here, I'm just letting this shellac burn off and do what it may for now. Luckily, it only takes a few seconds. And my wonderful camera <clears throat> lady is going to zoom in after the flames go away so that she doesn't light her camera on fire. But you can see this beautiful, beautiful shellac, um, almost creme brulee look that this achieves. It's absolutely wonderful. And I don't use shellac just for shellac's sake. I use it on a piece that is calling for it, that is begging to have this beautiful warmth as opposed to the complementary color of the blue. It makes sense, it feels right. So now, um, that part is done so I can talk to you a little bit more and take off my mask. Um, actually, I'm gonna hold it up while I do this and I won't talk for a minute, but, um, we can zoom in on how, I, when I light this just a little bit, you'll be able to see the shellac moving and breaking up and making sort of a cellular look. I'm gonna mask on. Can also tip the painting. Got a little drip right there, <clears throat> no big deal. <clears throat> if I want to get rid of that drip, I just scrape it right back off. It's a great thing about encaustic and wax, you can just erase your mistakes with a little scraper. So, um, turn this painting around. This is how it's coming together. Um, I'll probably take the next few hours with my bullet torch and just start moving the shellac around. I might add some more in some certain areas to make it look a little bit more thick. Um, you can let it dry and add shellac. You can let it dry and add more wax on top of it. Um, but that is a method that I absolutely love and I would love to teach you. It's a little scary to do on your own. so. Um, Give me a call, we'll set something up. And thank you so much for being with me today. I'll see you next month.